Hey guys, Pro 1701 here, and today we are looking at me bumping the camera. But we're also looking at the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge Legacy um, Mace Windu lightsaber. Now this is on loan to me from a friend of mine who uh, took his family out there recently and uh, decided to pick it up. And it looks stunning, but first let's talk about this case. This case is really nice. Um, got the rebel symbol right there. I was really impressed with the case when he showed it to me. Really, really nice looking. Very impressive. I wish Ultra Saber Sabers came with a case like this. And I love that inside, this cloth right here. It just fits right in until it's kind of custom made for it. It is a very, very nice case. Let's have a look at the saber. Move the case out of the way. I really like it. I've had time to fiddle with it a little bit. It's got this very nice chrome look to it. It's very shiny. Definitely catches the eye. Got the cover tech wheel right here with the pommel. Yeah. Oh, tells you right there how to replace the batteries this unscrews here this comes out um, and it has three AAA batteries in it that come out I don't actually have any more AAA batteries uh, these are the batteries on these are a little low but they're still working and then that slots right back in oh what does it There we go. There we go. That's a little tricky. You gotta line that up just right when you put it back in. Definitely uh, different than the Ultra Sabers, Sabers that I'm used to dealing with. But it looks really nice. I like the cover tech wheel. These grips actually feel more like rubber than plastic. They do have a rubber feel to them with maybe some plastic underneath. But they definitely don't feel like the hard plastic on, say, the... Uh, the Electrum Wind or the uh, Graflex. I mean, this right here definitely feels like rubber. This is a really good grip right here. I like the texture design right here. And it feels really comfortable when you're holding it. Uh, some gold accents there. You can see the windows right here with the gold accent here. You can't really see down there too well. And then the activation switch is here. Just press that up. Now, I like how the, unlike, say, Ultra Sabers and Saber Forge, where there's usually a button, you know, the activation is built into the Saber, which is pretty neat. It won't activate unless the blade's in it. I find that interesting. Definitely got some weight to it. It's a little beefy. Definitely got some weight to it. Feels really good. Feels solid. Like, it would make a really good display piece, you can tell. Let's look at the blade. Now this, uh, before we look at the blade, I believe this goes on, uh, uh, if you go to, not their workshop, but the, the little store where they have these, I think it's $129, $130 basically for this one, because this is not one of the custom made savers like you get in the Savvy's workshop. This is one of the legacy hilts, it's pre-built. Um, and it looks really, really good. And the Saber, I believe, is $130 and it comes with the case. The blade is sold separately. They have two blades. They have, I believe, a 36-inch blade and a 26-inch blade. And the 26 is $45, the 36 is $50. So those are separate. And again, this is very different than the Sabers I'm used to dealing with. Uh, as you can see, this has to connect to activate the saber which is pretty neat and definitely different from what i'm used to and the sabers the blades do look different than the ultra sabers blades i'm used to dealing with it's kind of a cross between the two as you can see right here here it is next to an an ultra edge ultra saber saber and a mid-grade blade ultra saber saber and there's the standard mid-grade there's the ultra edge and this one is kind of in the middle. It's definitely a different shade of white right here, but it does kind of have the surrounding plastic effect like the standard 
mid grade does where there's a little bit of a clear plastic around the white film much like here so let's go ahead and move these out of the way get this bad boy connected up let's see and to put that in makes a noise and then when you press it in it takes a little second to get that right there you go so you have to twist it counterclockwise to lock it into place see how I'm doing right here I'm twisting it and then clockwise to take it back out so counterclockwise and it's in place and there you go now I do think the blade is a little more purple normally the batteries are low and I just don't have any more AAA batteries because uh, my friend did tell me it usually sounds louder and sometimes when I'm cutting it on and off it does flash to a darker purple for a second so I do think the blade is supposed to be a little darker. It does have LEDs built into the hilt, it looks like. So unlike the Ultra Sabers, which are an LED, uh, or an LED built in the hilt on Ultra Sabers, I do believe that this has LEDs in the actual blade. See how it kind of turned purple right there? Let's see if it does it again. Yeah. I think that purple is supposed to be the normal shade of purple. Let's go ahead and give you guys a good view of it here and talk about it. All right, got flash on clash. That's the fun problem I have is a lot of times when I'm holding it and swinging it, I'm accidentally bumping that button down, the little activation button. Since it's not a switch like Old Shaver or Saber Forge, if you're not careful, your hand will slide and accidentally cut it off. That happens to me a lot. It's really comfortable to hold. These rubber grips really, really, really make it comfortable. I do enjoy that. Again, I do believe the sound is supposed to normally be louder. I just don't have any AAA batteries to swap that out. And I do think this blade is supposed to be a little more purple. But it's so comfortable, especially for a bigger saber. If you're really familiar with my channel, you know I tend to watch, I tend to prefer smaller sabers, like say the Ultra Sabers Prophecy or the Saber Forge Prodigy. This is a little beefier than what I usually would use in a duel, but it's so comfortable. I think I can make it work. The flash on clash works really, really well. Uh, definitely these rubber grips are better than the hard plastic grips on a lot of the Ultra Saber Sabers. So yeah, pretty easy to use. Again, I accidentally bump it off quite a bit. Let's have a look at it with the lights out real quick. Way too many lights on. You get a better view of it. And once again, I keep bumping it off. But you'll notice as it's cutting on and off, it does flicker to that darker purple for a brief second. I do think that much like with the standard setup of Ultra Sabers, when the batteries get low, the color starts to bleed into the red. I think this is the same. So yeah, see how it turns purple toward the ends? I'm pretty sure that's the normal color. But yeah, I really, really like it, uh, especially for the price. It's a really nice saber, and for only uh, $130, plus another $50 for the blades, you're still looking at less than $200. It's a beautiful hilt. Uh, love the rubber on it, love the chrome on it. I like how, even though it does cause some problems when you're swinging the saber, I like how the switch is built into it so it has a natural beautiful look that doesn't interrupt the look of the saber at all uh, it's a really really nice saber and it comes with a really nice carrying case so yeah the galaxy's edge legacy mace windu saber i really really like it i'm pretty fond of it um yeah 
So, this is Prowl 171. We've been looking at the Mace Windu Star Wars Legacy Saber from Galaxy's Edge. Uh, click the like button. Click the subscribe button. Click the bell for notifications. Check out some of my other cool lightsaber videos. I also have another channel I do called Another Sci-Fi Guy, where I talk about other sci-fi related content, especially Doctor Who stuff. So, if you're a big Doctor Who fan, you should check that page out. I put up new videos on that channel daily. Um... And most importantly, stay safe out there, and thank you for watching.